and we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fifth and final segment for today. We're just going to be talking about some news around the league, some other stuff that I did want to talk about that's going on in baseball that is significant, but I don't think it's significant enough for me to talk about in a full segment. But I did want to still get my thoughts on it, so I'll be going over that. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. Do get a number of questions from viewers to ensure that your question does get read on the air. Please hit the link, gsmcpodcast.net. Really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get back into the show for today for our fifth and final segment. So, going to be talking about some news around the league. So, let's get into it, starting off with two Dodgers stories. First of all, top Dodgers prospect Dalton Rushing, who has been a catcher throughout his entire minor league career, is now apparently transitioning to be a left fielder fully. He was just called up from AA to AAA Oklahoma City with the Dodgers. And I think he could be up by the end of this year. I think it's maybe a reach, but I also think he could be on the starting roster for next year at the Dodgers. Now, I never thought he would be a catcher long term. I thought he could have played the position maybe two to three years in the MLB. But I also didn't think he was a horrible defensive catcher that, you know, maybe could have stayed there. But I think this just makes a lot of sense right now with where the Dodgers are at. They have their long term catcher locked up with Will Smith on a 10 year contract. He's not going anywhere. And the Dodgers are really hurt with offensive with offensive help from the outfield there. I mean, you've had um, what you thought would be your franchise center fielder in James Outman go down to AAA and really not be a factor for your future anymore. You've had Mookie Betts get hurt. So I think offensive production has been something that has been a problem from your outfield for a little while now. And I think you may look at it as a problem in the future as well. So preparing Dalton Rushing to move to a position that is of more need in the future when your catch position is pretty much taken for the next decade plus, I think makes a lot of sense. I think he could still potentially be kind of a spot catcher whenever Will Smith needs a day off, maybe instead of carrying a traditional backup catcher like you have done for a long time with Austin Barnes. Maybe you have Dalton Rushing be your starting left fielder, and then whenever Will Smith needs a day off, you know, every two or three days, you have him play catcher, and then you have someone come off the bench, play left field, or, you know, have your DH, whatever that is, go to left field and have um, Will Smith play uh, DH and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think it would be really interesting. And, um, yeah, uh, Sam Raj in the comments here, he says he has a question. So go ahead, feel free to ask. I will um, try my best to answer it. Uh, next, we also have the next Dodgers news. Roots are great. Aral was out for the year with an injury. Just came back from being off the injured list the entire year. And now is out for the rest of the year after a really freak play in the mound where he kind of bumped into someone. And, man, it's just really unfortunate for him. Really was supposed to be a big part of this Dodgers bullpen. And the fact now that he is going to be out for the rest of the year really is unfortunate and really is something that I think is sad. He seems like a really great guy, has been a really great guy for his entire career. And, you know, was supposed to be a big part of this Dodgers bullpen, has some of the most electrifying stuff in baseball. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Sam Raj in the comments asks here, what team should I support? I'm new to baseball. Um, I think it's up to you. I think maybe you do some research on teams. Maybe there's some players you like. Not sure where you're from. I would. I always suggest rooting for rooting for the team that's closest to you. I'm not sure if you're from America or not, or the states or Canada, something like that. So I highly suggest rooting for a team close to you. But if there isn't anything close to you, I just say whatever team you like. I mean, you can choose whatever you know. You like players. You like uniforms. Whatever you kind of like, just do some research. And I say, um, really, just make the decision. But. Um, yeah, always new fans. New fans of baseball are always great, so really whatever you want to do I think is okay with me. Next, we have the Tampa Bay Rays reinstating Drew Rasmussen off the injured list. Of course, been out for the entire year with Tommy John surgery, and now is back and is going to be a big part of this Rays rotation, not just for this year, but for next year as well. You know, the Rays traded a lot of people, but they're also getting a lot of people back from injury. You just got back Jeffrey Springs. You just got back Drew Rasmussen. Shane McClanahan is going to be back sometime I would say next year. So as much as you did trade Zach Eflin, you, know, you traded some other starting pitchers as well, you're still going to have on the roster next year. You're going to have, for your starting rotation, you're going to have Rasmussen, Springs, Taj Bradley, Shane Boss. You're going to be having um, Zach Littell. You're going to be having some other guys whose names I'm blanking on as well. So you have a lot of good starting pitchers on this rotation as well, even after trading so many guys. So the Rays' depth is really one of the big reasons why they have been such a fantastic team going for the last few years, and I don't think it's really stopping. Ryan Pepio as well. Uh, Tyler Alexander, not sure if he's going to be there next year, but him as well. So still have a ton of great starting pitchers for this Rays team, and it's going to be very, very interesting to be able to see. 
you know, how they are going to perform next year and in the future as well, even after blowing this team up at the deadline. Albert Alzelay is undergoing Tommy John surgery for the Chicago Cubs. Pretty unfortunate here. Alzelay was the closer for the Cubs last year, was up and down with injuries all year, and now it's official that he is going to have Tommy John. And of course, going to miss all of this year, considering there's like a month left in the regular season and the Cubs aren't making the playoffs. They're going to be missing all of next year and then probably some into 2026. Not far, I think, but at least some part of it. So that is unfortunate. Looked to be a promising bullpen arm after he kind of flamed out at, at the rotation at the start of his career. So um, obviously unfortunate for him, I thought was going to be a big part of the Cubs' future bullpen. But hey, it's what it is, right? What are you going to do? So um, really hope he gets back really soon. Always seemed like a really good guy, very active on social media. It's really good with the Cubs fans. So hope he gets back soon and hope he is better than ever. Next Cubs news, we also have them signing former Mets starting pitcher Adrian Hauser. Hauser, of course, came over in a trade with the Brewers to the Mets in the offseason, slotted in as the Mets' five starter, made six or seven starts with them, and was absolutely awful. Um, was one of the worst starting pitchers I've watched for the Mets in a long time, and that's saying something. But the Mets moved him back to the bullpen as a, in, a long relief kind of role, in a long relief kind of role, and he had a good amount of success there. They did, they did have to end up DFAing him after they did add so many bullpen arms at the deadline, so kind of a roster crunch. But, you know, I did think they would be able to trade him, so it was kind of a surprise when they just let him go. I always thought there was going to be an active market for him, and I think signing with the Cubs makes a lot of sense. He can provide bullpen depth and also rotation depth, really whatever um, whatever they really need for them. So I think Hauser still provides um, a very good role for whatever team. So it's going to be really interesting for me to watch what he does with this Cubs team. and you know, see how he does perform in the future. I think he still has a lot of talent. It's just about getting the role right for him and getting his stuff right. Next, we have another former Met. The Baltimore Orioles are signing J.D. Davis after he was released by the Yankees. Obviously, has played with the A's and Yankees this year. Was traded from the Giants in the preseason to the A's. Didn't do great there. Signed with the Yankees as kind of a bench bat type and didn't do great there. Now, signing with the Orioles. Orioles obviously feel they don't have enough right-handed bats because they traded for Eloy, Eloy Jimenez and Austin Slater at the deadline, two lefty killers, and then also signed J.D. Davis, a guy who has killed lefties in the past. Obviously hasn't done that as great this year, but still has the pedigree of doing that. So Orioles obviously feel like they need more right-handed batters, and I think signing J.D. Davis is fine. Um, I think he's a fine player. I don't think there's anything more than that. I don't think he'll be on this team's playoff roster, but he's a good bench bat. He's a good fill-in guy whenever someone needs a day off, and that's really it. He's a good veteran bat, again, that knows what he's doing. He's just a good, solid player, and I think we'll be really interested to see what is going to happen with him and his future and what his role is on the Orioles team. So I think it's a nice, fine, solid signing here by the Orioles team. The Twins are signing reliever Giovanni Gallegos to a minor league contract. I like this move a lot here. Gallegos was one of the premier middle relief pitchers in the league for a little while after coming over in a trade from the Yankees to the Cardinals. Was really good with the Cardinals for a little while, but after signing a two-year extension with the Cardinals and with a roster crunch and not doing that great this year, he was and he did end up being DFA'd by the Cardinals and I thought would get a lot of attention on the free agent market for a minor league contract, and that's exactly what happened here. The Twins have had a lot of bullpen injuries this year, and I think signing Gallegos to a contract makes a lot of sense for them, and a lot of sense for a Gallegos. He goes to another good team, and the Twins, who have been really good for a little while, and also gets a chance to also be a big part of their bullpen as well. I really like this move, and I think that Gallegos could be a genuine difference maker for this bullpen once he gets healthy and back to his ways, and I'm very interested to see what is going to happen with Gallegos and how he's going to perform here. Luis Renjifo and Chase Silsleth are out for the rest of the year for the Angels. Two of their better, younger players. There's a lot of rumors surrounding Renjifo. I guess that's probably one of the reasons why he wasn't great at the deadline because of this injury. But both are going to be back next year for this Angels team. And if they ever want to be good, these two are a big part of their young core, um, especially Renjifo, who's become a really good second baseman for this, for this Angels team. Doesn't play great defense, but hits the ball really well. He's a switch hitter. Has some versatility around the infield as well. Was connected to the Yankees mainly. I thought wouldn't be a great fit just because of the defense, but I think Renjifo is a pretty solid player, and I think could end up being a big part of the Angels' future core here. And getting back next year, I think, will be big time for him. If the Angels, again, ever want to be competitive, again, they need Chase Silsleth and Renjifo to be healthy and become big parts of their future team. Wilmer Flores is out for the year with the, for the Giants with a knee injury. Not a surprise, been dealing with this all year and is now out for the year officially. 
hasn't been that great this year so again you're not losing that much and you also added some depth as well at the deadline so it's not a huge deal but again it's been a very solid player for the giants for the past few years so um he's unfortunately a little bit there but again not too bad and finally the news i wanted to end off with here was billy bean passing away at the age of 60 yesterday um not the money ball billy bean i know a lot of people are going to think that but billy bean was the one of the first openly gay baseball players and was one was um, MLB's big time diversity inclusion kind of guy with you know um, minority players and LGBTQ plus players. So unfortunate. Um, obviously, was a legend within baseball. Did a lot of great things. Made people feel welcome, welcome within the game, and he will be missed. A great man and a great guy within baseball. So um, passed away from cancer, unfortunately, which obviously um, is very very sad. So um, I want to end off with that. Uh, R.I.P. to the legend Billy Bean. Um, was a great, was a really solid player within the game, but what he did off the field as well from minority players and just diversity and inclusion for baseball within all players from walks of life was really, really great and um, is going to be missed and made a lot and did a lot within the game of baseball for a lot of people and did a really great job. So that is it for my show today, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe to the notification bell to not only get notified when I upload, but when all the other great content creators on this channel do. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Um, again, th again, thank you so much for watching. I'm your host, Sam Menzi. We'll see you at Baseball Throws Us tomorrow. And thanks, guys. See you then. Thanks, and bye. <laughs>